Good morning, dear students. Welcome to Gyan Diksha Concept Based Digital Learning. This is Dr. Anita Disosa working as a lecturer in commerce from TSWRDC, Varangal East. I have come here to discuss a very important topic with all of you that is introduction to financial management and functions of finance manager. This topic is there for you in your BCom last semester as well as those of you who will be pursuing your higher education in terms of MBA and MCOM, this will be one of your core subjects. So coming to the main topic, introduction to financial management first, let us understand what do you mean by the term finance. You might have heard this term finance in n number of ways, but let us understand it properly, what does finance mean, okay. So the concept of finance here includes capital, funds, money. Now, if I'll ask you a simple question, uh, is money important to all of you? Many of you will give me different answers saying money is important to all of you, money is not very important to all of you or few of you may say that money is not important at all. Now, to come to a certain conclusion, I'll give you another example. Uh, let us say that a rupee 1 is somewhere fallen in your room, in your sitting room or in your uh, bedroom. Not all, of, uh, not all of you will take the pain of picking up the 1 rupee and then putting it in your wallet or picking up the 1 rupee and then putting, uh, putting it in your purse. What you would do is, you might ignore the rupee 1 that has been fallen down or you might just pick up the 1 rupee and then keep it somewhere. But the same 1 rupee is acting as a balance in your mobile phone. I repeat again, the same 1 rupee is acting as a balance in your mobile phone. Your perception of 1 rupee will change. Why? Because with the single rupee, you can make a call to someone, you can send a message to somebody, you can use a little of internet and then you can uh, move ahead with your current situation. So what I mean to say here is each penny is important, each money is important. Money is important not only from an individual perspective but money is important from business perspective also, right? So now let us see the meaning of finance here. As I told you, the concept of finance includes capital, funds, money, etc. Right? So, be it any enterprise, it can be a large scale organization, medium scale organization or small scale organization, they need money to carry on its operations. What kind of operations? An organization may be in need of purchasing some fixed assets, say for example land, building, machinery. At the same time, the organization may be in need of taking care of the day-to-day -day activities of the business. What are the day-to-day -day activities of the business? It can be the rent for your building, it can be salaries, it can be stationery, it can be money that you are giving for postage, advertisement, etc. So what I mean to say here is, irrespective of the scale of operations of your enterprise, finance plays an important role. So let's see the definition of finance here. Finance is defined as the provision of money at a time when it is needed, right? So what do you mean by provision? Provision basically means availability, right? So any organization you have, you need to have some minimum amount of finance with you. That is the reason we say finance is regarded as the lifeblood of the entire organization. Without finance, no organization can survive. Now moving on to the next topic that is introduction to financial management, right? Now financial management as you can see here on the screen is an integral part of the overall management. What do you mean by the integral part? Integral part here implies an essential part of the entire organization. Why? Because the funds of the organization which are into the business are basically dealt only in financial management. So if you see the definition given by Joseph and Messi, it says financial management is the operational activity of a business that is responsible for obtaining and effectively utilizing the funds necessary for efficient operations. 
let us understand this definition properly okay we are saying financial management is the operational activity operational activity means it is that activity which is giving you some money or some revenue without this activity your business cannot move ahead right so with this money you are trying to obtain money and you are trying to use that money for the betterment of the organization that is the reason financial management is also concerned with the duties of finance managers in the business organizations not all of us can be finance managers or you are an entrepreneur you cannot be everywhere that is the reason you appoint a person known as finance manager to deal only with the financial aspect of the organization now moving on to the next uh, topic that is the objectives of financial management okay there are basically two objectives of financial management the first one being profit maximization and the second one being wealth maximization so when i'm saying profit maximization okay again profit is not a very new term to all of you you might have heard profit with a different names it can be called as revenue it can be called as income right so your profit implies the financial benefit realized when the revenue generated from the business activity exceeds the expenses in short profit is equal to income minus expenses right no business organization can survive without profit why because if you want your business to grow if you want your business to have some perpetual existence you need some money that is the reason we are saying that profit maximization is important at the same time whatever profits we are accumulating from previous years they can be used in any unfavorable situation also situations like fall in prices competition from other business units or any kind of adverse government policies may affect your organization here when we are saying profit maximization okay it is the objective of the business as a whole but the opinion of people or different authors is not the same few authors are saying yes profit maximization is the goal of the business few authors are saying that no profit maximization is not the aim of the business now let us understand what are the arguments which are in favor of profit maximization okay when we are saying if you see the first point when we are saying when profit maximization is the aim of business then ultimately profit maximization should be the obvious objective you ask anybody what is the goal for which you are establishing your business everyone will say it's profit right from a local kirana store to a mnc they will tell you that profit is the ultimate goal so when you are saying profit is the ultimate goal invariably profit maximization becomes the objective of the business at the same time profitability is a barometer for measuring efficiency and economic prosperity of a business if you want to invest in any business you will not simply invest just like that you will try to check the previous year records or you can say previous 5 year records of the business and if you feel the business has given you some profits then only you will invest in such a company so here also whatever profits you are getting they are a barometer barometer is a instrument which we use to measure the efficiency of the business so here because profit is a mirror of the company we can say profit maximization is important at the same time a business should try to earn more when the situation is favorable okay not every time we will earn profits now if you see in this pandemic time if you open a hotel business it may not give you profits but at the same time if you open a business where you are manufacturing masks or you are preparing some sanitizers it will give you profits right so we are saying profit maximization is important why because not all the time situation will be in our hands to face recession to face depression in the economy to face a severe competition we are saying profit maximization is important at the same time if you want your business to grow if you want your business to be developed if you want your business to be expanded you need profits 
and uh, profits are important also for fulfilling social goals what do you mean by social goals there are few organizations who have this concept known as uh, uh, social responsibility so to fulfill the social responsibility towards the societies or the employees you again need profits now in the next slide you can see there are few arguments against profit maximization okay that is here the authors are saying that no profit maximization is not the objective of the uh, financial management for example when i told you the term profit okay when i say you profit not all of you will have a clear picture why because when i say profit you do not understand whether i am speaking of earnings okay that is before tax after tax or whether i'm speaking of profit before tax after tax if i'm speaking of income or if i'm speaking of revenue so here the term profit is not defined properly it is closely associated with income it is closely associated with revenue at the same time the profit maximization ignores time value of money what do you mean by time value of money for example there is a company a company who has earned 5 lakhs in one year okay a company who has earned 5 lakhs in one year there is another company b who is in the business since 5 years okay has earned 5 lakhs so now if you see the profits are same but which is the company who has earned 5 lakhs easily it is a company right so when you are Uh, checking the progress of the company you should also take into consideration the time value of money here in profit maximization it does not give importance to risk to factor for them all the organizations are same which is practically not true there are few organizations which give importance to risk and they try to move ahead there are few organizations which try to remain very stable and then stay in the market at the same time uh, one of the argument is it doesn't give importance to the dividend policy okay dividends are important for the shareholders if you want the shareholders to stay in the organization you need to motivate them how will you motivate them you will motivate them by giving some kind of dividends or some kind of interest so profits maximization is not giving any importance to the dividend policy also so please remember whatever profit maximization we have seen is from the view point of the entire organization the second objective of profit maximization is wealth maximization okay so this wealth maximization is from the view point of a shareholder or a stock broker so wealth maximization here means by maximizing stockholders wealth the firm is operating consistently towards maximizing stockholders utility what does it imply over here the organization is trying to maximize the stockholders wealth how by giving him the shares that he has okay so how do you calculate the stockholders wealth here you calculate the stockholders wealth in a firm by using a simple formula known as number of shares owed into current price per share so here also uh, how we have seen for profit maximization that is arguments in favor and arguments against for wealth maximization also we have the same okay if you see the screen here we say it's arguments in favor of wealth maximization that is those authors who feel that wealth maximization is the ultimate objective of the financial management so see the first point it serves the interest of owners and shareholders in a firm if you do not motivate your shareholders if you do not motivate your stockholders there is a high chance that they may leave your organization so if you give them their part of dividend their part of interest your organization will move on smoothly at the same time uh, wealth maximization is consistent with the objective of owners economic welfare okay you are not at all giving importance to only business but here you are giving importance to the owners also okay which is very important at the same time wealth maximization implies long run survival and growth of the firm why because you are able to keep your employees happy you are able to keep them into your organization so when they are associated with you for a long number of time your 
chances of your organization moving ahead will increase at the same time wealth maximization gives importance to risk factor time value of money and also dividend policy of the shares unlike the profit maximization now the next thing that we will see is arguments against wealth maximization what do you mean by against it is basically those authors who feel that wealth maximization is not the goal of the financial management if you see the first point it says it is perspective what do you mean by perspective it is basically a theoretical concept the authors here feel that wealth maximization is good only in books but if you see the practical part it is not at all possible you need profits to run your business rather than anything else that is the reason one of the arguments against wealth maximization is it is perspective at the same point there is a controversy as to whether the objective is to maximize the stockholders wealth or the value of the firm there is no clear cut distinction given with regard to profit maximization and wealth maximization so there is lot of confusion and this theory is yet to be evolved at the same time it is not practicable when ownership and management are separated you may be owner of a very big organization but if you are owner of very big organization you cannot be present everywhere in the organization so what do you do you try to appoint a person or you try to appoint a separate management to take care of your business activities so when ownership is different with management you cannot say that wealth maximization is the goal of the financial management now to achieve these objectives or goals of financial management you need a person who is taking care of your organization without your presence also right so that person is known as finance manager he is responsible to take your objectives and then put them into reality so the changed environment in the recent past has widened the role of financial manager why because if you see in the present context there is increasing rate of industrialization there is rise of large scale organizations and intense competition all this has led the emergence of finance manager why because he is expected to be expertized in financial planning and control therefore in the present business context a person is needed to plan and control the finances of the organization and he is known as finance manager now here you will see what are the functions of finance manager the very first point being financial forecasting and planning what do you mean by forecasting here forecasting basically means any kind of prediction that you undergo and our prediction might be right or wrong right so when the financial manager is making a financial forecasting he will try to take the past records and then compare it with the present situation so once he is comparing the past record with the present situation he will plan his financial activities that is the reason the finance manager has to estimate the financial needs of the business based on this estimation he has to decide about how much capital he would like to keep for purchasing fixed assets how much money he would like to keep for meeting day to day requirements of the business so once financial forecasting and planning is done the second thing that he will go for is acquisition of funds now what do you mean by acquisition acquisition here means accumulating accumulating or gathering right so when you start your business you need money to start your business so what will you do you would first try to invest your own money and if you feel the money that you have is insufficient you may take the help of your family or friends now again if the money is insufficient ultimately you will try to go for the various sources of finance which can be shares debentures financial institutions and commercial banks here you will try to weigh the pros and cons of each source and then you will take the best decision based on which profit or in what way can you earn more money with less interest that is being paid so accumulation of funds basically is decided by the finance manager as to which source he can take the next point that we have is investment of funds 
it is not sufficient that once you gather money you will get profits you need to invest your money somewhere right so here the finance manager will try to compare the cost of acquiring funds with the returns okay i repeat again the cost of acquiring funds with the returns so for this what he would do he would try to invest in those areas where he will get maximum returns and to arrive at maximum returns he will take the techniques of capital budgeting why because finance or money is scarce not all the organizations will have lot of money so when there are three or four projects which are very important and you do not know which project to be taken up you take the help of techniques of capital budgeting techniques of capital budgeting include net present value internal rate of return payback method these methods will basically tell you in which project you should invest so that which project will give you returns very easily so for this the finance manager will keep few principles in his mind like safety liquidity soundness of his project and then he will invest into the business the fourth point that you have is finance manager is helpful in evaluating decisions not all of us can take decisions quickly so if you take any business organizations we need to act fast so in the present competitive world you might have seen about lot of mergers and acquisitions that are taking place mergers and acquisitions have become a common scenario in the present situation why because of recurring losses that the organization is facing okay at the same time the companies do not want to pursue further now what do you mean by a merger merger basically means two companies two equal companies coming together and forming a separate company that is the reason reason merger is known as merger of equals i'll give you a small example there is a company who is earning high profits there is a b company also who is earning high profits okay a company earning high profits b company also earning high profits they decide to dominate the market by coming together and forming a new company known as c so here your equation will be merger is equal to a plus b is equal to c that is a new company has been formed the same with acquisition when i say acquisition it is about two companies for example a company who is earning high profits b company who is not earning profits so here what a company will do a company is already into profits will try to acquire b company who is into losses so here your equation will be a plus b is equal to a a plus b is equal to a so here when the companies are being merged when the companies are being acquired lot of calculations have to be taken place for example calculations based on purchase considerations calculation based on shares calculations based on goodwill so here the finance manager should assist the management in taking important decisions he should understand the various methods of calculating shares or goodwill or purchase consideration and the same thing should be communicated to the management the fifth point that you can see on the screen is finance manager should maintain proper liquidity here why liquidity is required in the organization says to meet any kind of contingency event or emergency event so here liquidity is required to determine the need for liquid assets and then arrange liquid assets in such a way that there is no scarcity of funds a wise finance manager will not invest everything he is having he will try to keep some amount as reserve to meet the needs of the organization and one of the best liquid assets we have as you all know is cash cash is the best source for maintaining liquidity so every business concern be it a large scale organization or a small scale organization is required to maintain liquidity for meeting its day to day requirements now coming to the decisions that are to be taken by the finance manager the first decision that you can see on the screen is investment decision 
As I told you, the finance manager will follow certain principles of investment, safety, liquidity, soundness. So here, these investment decisions relate to the determination of the total amount of assets to be held in the firm and the composition of the assets. So here, whenever he is taking an investment decision, he will try to frame a portfolio. He will try to frame a portfolio and here he will divide the portfolio in such a way that there is enough space for long term investments, there is enough space for short term investments. So when he is taking decisions based on long term investments, he will give importance to capital budgeting decisions that is decisions based on purchasing fixed assets like land, building, furniture etc and he will try to go for short term investments like your working capital decisions that are those expenditure which you need on day to day basis. The second decision that the finance manager will take is all about financing decision. Here the finance manager has to select such a sources of funds which will give him optimum capital structure. So here he will decide among the different sources of capital structure like debentures, equity, preference as to which one is the most ideal one. So if you see the debt to equity ratio, that is the ideal one that is basically preferred in all the organizations. That is debt 50%, equity 50%. So here you are giving proper significance and importance to debt and equity. Coming to the third decision that you have, is dividend decisions. As I told you, dividends play a very important role to keep your employees into the organizations or to keep the shareholders into your organization. So here, dividend refers to that part of profits of a company which is distributed by it among the shareholders. So just as an employee who waits for salary at the end of the month, here also shareholders, they wait for dividends. So these dividends are a reward to the shareholders for their investments made by them. So a decision has to be taken if the profits are to be distributed to the shareholders or if the profits are, are to be kept with the organization. At the same time, the finance manager will decide as to who to declare the dividends. So after listening to this class, I think most of you will be able to prepare for these questions. Please go through the important questions that I have kept here on the slide. The first question, what do you mean by finance? Write down any two definitions of financial management. As I told you, finance implies capital, funds, money and it is the life blood of the entire organization. I have even given you a definition of financial management that is based on Joseph and Messi who said that financial management is the operational activity of a business that is responsible for getting the funds into the organization and also investing the money into the business. The second question, write in brief about the objectives of financial management. This we have discussed very much in detail. So you can even add your own points also. One of the objective was profit maximization. What we have seen is from the viewpoint of the organization. The second one was wealth maximization that was from the viewpoint of the shareholder. So when you are writing down the essay for this particular point, please make it sure that you are writing it separately. Profit maximization, what are the points in favor? What are the points against? Same way wealth maximization, what are the points in favor? What are the points against? The third point you can see, the third question, who is the finance manager? Explain the functions of finance manager. As I told you, we cannot be everywhere. If you are a very expert also, you cannot be everywhere. You need to appoint a person who will take care of your entire organization and he is known as finance manager. So here you will explain about the functions of finance manager. Here because of the time constraint, I have kept only five points. But if you see the practicality in the present situation, the role of finance manager has increased. He should have good coordinating skills. He should have good communication skills. He should be tech savvy so that he can move ahead with the organization. The last question explain the different uh, decisions uh, taken by the finance manager. As I told you, there are three definitions so that you can write with the help of examples also. These questions you can expect either in short or essay. So at the end, let me summarize my topic. 
what we have seen in today's class is about the meaning of finance we have seen the meaning and definition of financial management we have seen the objectives of financial management objectives of financial management goals of financial management they are the same functions of finance manager decisions to be taken by the finance manager at the same time as i told you earlier also the role of finance manager is very complex not all of us can be finance manager as i told you earlier not all of us can be a finance manager uh, everywhere in the organization but we are finance manager in our respective homes and in the workplaces that we are so if we follow the principles of financial management and investment management what we will have is a road full of financial independence so thank you one and all for listening to my class stay home stay safe thank you